Greg Oak and Raj is live. Live at 5, West Coast time. That's right. I should hope somebody joins on tonight. Um, you'll never find another love like mine. You keep searching and searching your whole life through. Tyler, how you? Oh, the dull carbide. That's right, the kid. Yeah, I won't call you a kid, Tyler. You're a lot smarter than a lot of the adults out there, so I'm not going to go there with you. First Lady of Seats is here, uh, Mr. Blue, um, and uh, what's wrong with the singing? Come on, Mr. Wolf, I sing great. Another love like mine. Joel, what up with you, brother? I'll try and get some light in here. You guys need to see how pretty I am. Because I, uh, <laughs> Tyler, I, I hope nobody calls you worse. You're a pretty sharp kid. So I appreciate that about you. So tonight, got some new products to show you guys. Well, not, one's new, one's not new. Um, yeah, Wolf is slow. Um, Temecula Bob in the house. Brother, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Glad you liked that header I had made. I don't know, that, that engine must have changed hands three or four times, that old West Bend 820 that I did a little polishing on. Yep. I'm in witness protection. Got no fingerprints left. Um, Ange is in the house. Kevin Royce, good to see you, brother. Mr. Six-Pack, 12-Pack, my little brother. Um who else we got? <laughs> Wolfman. Yeah, you're probably faster than Angelo because he, he's used to riding bicycles. Um, he, he, he typically pedals his stuff uh, more than he rides his stuff. Um, my buddy Paul in the house. Paul's my guinea pig. This is OMB Warehouse. We are live on Facebook. This is uh, live, unedited. And uh, coming to you from the Gray Go Garage. That's right. Always got to sport my shirt. Um, OMBWarehouse.com. Been working there well over a year now. And uh, I do need to tell you all that they are, uh, Hint and Vicky, hardest working people you've ever seen. And uh, it certainly is um, impressive to me to see people that are so much younger than me that work so much harder than anybody else on the planet. Those guys are fantastic. So, um, you know, uh, love, love those guys. They do an awesome job and, uh, we certainly do our best every day. Um, you guys know that, uh, Eric, me, I am the gray goat from the gray goat garage, but I am also help. Can't see the fingers help at ombwarehouse.com. That's right. If you need, help with anything, I am your go-to guy. Mini bikes, carts, well, I've sold some forklift parts lately. So, you know, whatever you need, ombwarehouse.com, we uh, we have it all. If we don't have it, you don't need it, okay? Um, also, don't forget, uh, hang out at oldminibikes.com. Um, a lot of fantastic builds going on over there. And uh, mini biking in the house. Elvin, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Um, and Brandon. Um, Got to see some Coleman people in the house tonight um, from the uh, Coleman CT200 uh, Facebook group. Uh, want those guys in the house tonight. I've got a couple products that they need to see. So first thing I'll show you is something that it, it's not new on the market. It's um, We've had this for a few months now, but um, I, I'm very proud of this piece. I, I helped design it and build it, and if I was any weaker, I couldn't hold it up. Um, any of you that uh, have seen uh, Trevor, good to see you, brother, in the house. Chad, thank you for stopping by. We got Chad White Knight and Chad Jennerith. We are playing Quizzo tonight, so you guys all have a chance to win. Okay, I'm sending out. It's always backwards. I'm sending out Grey Goat T-shirts. So if you guys want to play, sharpen up your Google skills and get on your Googling and facebook live with ombwarehouse.com you too can join backwards again the elite club of the grego garage the uh 
These aren't for sale anywhere, um, not on Amazon, not on eBay. These are only available to win here at OMBWarehouse.com, Facebook Live. So we are in the house. Robert C., hey, what's up, buddy? You know, I'm not going to Winbur this year, and it breaks my heart. I, uh, I wish I could see all you guys again, and um, it, it, it saddens me, but it's just not in the cards this year. So sorry about that, guys. Um, oh, and Chad White Knight will be right back. Dude, really? Come on, we're live. We can't be right back. Do I say I'm going to be right back? No. Dude, what's up with that? Okay, Coleman, guys. When you think about the uh, – the CT200U and putting a torque converter on that bike. Um, you know, every overhead valve engine, you have to go up with the engine to, to clear the bottom of the torque converter plate. You can cut the plate. That, that's not always the, the, the best option. So we, we developed a plate that, um, Robert, I mean, we all need jobs too. Uh, Nicholas is in the house. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Um, when, when, when we developed this plate for the Coleman bike, one, one issue that we had was the, where the engine plate is, there, there's a bar at the front of that that actually is above the, the flat engine plate. So you, you only have so much room to move that engine forward. Um, if you look through some of the, um, uh, the pictures, if, if you Google Coleman CT200U, I swear that I seen one that had a bent frame because somebody cut that crossbar that goes that everybody thinks, oh, that crossbar just holds the, the chain guard. Well, let's face it, guys. The Chinese aren't going to spend the money to have a piece of metal bent and welded just for a chain guard. It doesn't happen that way in China. It's all about cost and how we can do this as cheaply as possible. So, you know, we weren't a fan of cutting that. Um, like, like, like some of the um, other companies out there, they want you to cut that bar off. Uh, OMB Warehouse said, no can do, me amigo. We ain't going there. So we developed a plate that will allow you to lift your engine up and raise it forward. It'll, it'll clear that crossbar. It'll clear the frame. And it's a bolt-on application. <clears throat> Old man Hent and I, we worked on this plate for a long time. This goes to the front of the bike. This is the base, and here's the top. You'll see the top has these nut certs in here, and we've torqued these to 100 foot-pounds, broke the bolt, and the nut cert was still intact. And then we screwed the bolt out after we were done. Um, so this plate is so popular with our kit that I don't have an opportunity to offer it separately anyway. And if I did offer it separately, um, that, that just means that people are going to email help at ombwarehouse.com and say, hey, my header doesn't fit with this plate. Hey, my air cleaner doesn't fit with this plate. Hey, how come this plate's not painted? Well, it's in raw steel because we want to give you the option of painting it whatever color you want. Isn't that great of us? We're good like that. So with this plate, you can paint it whatever color you want. You, you can actually let it rust if you want. But uh, this plate is engineered um, for the, the CT200U. We are working on a solution for the EX and that funky 16-millimeter uh, crank. But um, you'll want to set some extra holes in here, too. This will also work on the Doodlebug DB30s. That's right, fellas. So if you had a DB30 and you want to put a torque converter on there, the Coleman CT200U kit that uh, has the performance upgrades, that kit will work on a doodlebug as well. So <clears throat> this is a very substantial piece. You can uh, see the thickness of the metal. You can see the penetration of the welds. Um, it, it doesn't get any better than this. So don't cut your frame on those Coleman bikes. I, I'm not crazy about that, and uh, you shouldn't be either. And <clears throat> David, just keep it to yourself, dude. Looks weak. Yeah, like your bikes, dude. You ever see, Dave, you've seen my bikes. My bikes don't look nothing like yours because mine are nice. All right. I, right. um, Sean Brewer in the house, Arizona mini bikes in the house. Thanks for stopping by, Sean. Good to see you, brother. Hey, Sean, this plate here works for doodle bugs. 
It's got extra mounting holes in the bottom. So you can put this on a doodle bug with our torque converter, moves the engine up and forward. So this way you have the option of putting that engine in there minus the tank. You got to take the tank off, run a remote tank on a doodle. No, we did it with a tank on a doodle bug. Um, but this with our, with our stage one kit um, works and it, and it works really well. Um, I've got a new product I'm going to show you guys tonight. <clears throat> it's uh Something I'm, it's incredibly simple, but it's engineered well, it works well, and um, you know, I know a lot of you classic mini bike guys are like, ah, Warrior this, Heat that, MB200 this, Coleman that, but you guys have to remember that it's these Coleman bikes and the Bajas that are keeping this um, hobby alive. Um, right now, you know, there's too many people that don't have the skill or the ability to go out and get a, uh, yeah, Sean, we need to talk, brother. You need to call me, um, or I need to call you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the Chinese stuff is, is, uh, accelerating in this sport, uh, in this hobby. Um, you know, I see a lot of guys that, uh, you know, everything's predator, this predator, that, and, I'm an engine guy. I don't care. You know, anybody that knows me loves, I, knows that I love my old flatheads and I'm a Briggs five horse guy, but I can't get, make that power out of a, out of a five horse like I can with a predator. So even with my fancy Edelbrock heads and big cams and billet flywheels and rods and, and different carburetors, I just can't do it on a flathead. So we, we can do a lot more things with predators. So, uh, unfortunately, China is help saving our hobby. And, uh, you know, I, I, like you guys, I hate to see a Predator 212 on a Taco 22. Breaks my heart. Shouldn't be there. Doesn't belong there. But you know what? Keeping that taco uh, with somebody sitting on it that's smiling. Like that. You like that? Okay. So <clears throat> one of the issues that we had. And, and I get this all the time, and some of my competitors just sell a standard sprocket with the wrong bolt pattern and say, yeah, this goes on to your Coleman bike, um, but it, it doesn't. So what, what uh, OMB Warehouse has done for you and me personally is I created an adapter. And you'll notice with this adapter, it has four bolt holes that line up with the hub on an MB200, a Warrior, a Heat, a Coleman CT200U, and the Camo EX bike. So what this does is this will allow you to put a standard cart type sprocket with the six bolt pattern that's on a five and a quarter inch circle onto your Coleman bike or Baja Warrior or Heat. Um, a lot of people on the Coleman side, I posted up a picture. My buddy Paul, um, he is my guinea pig for this product. Um, what this does is you bolt this onto your standard hub. Your sprocket goes on the outside here and uses these six bolt holes. Currently, I'm stocking 40 tooth sprockets, 54 and 60. Um, cause I get, uh, you know, help at OMB warehouse. I get all sorts of questions all day long. Some people want to go faster. Some people want more torque. So with this, the guys that want more torque, you can go to a 54 or a 60 tooth sprocket on a Coleman. The guys that want more speed, they can go with the 40 sprocket. So it just simply bolts onto the outside here. You bolt this onto your hub and it's ambidextrous. It'll go either way. So um, what I want you guys to do, if anybody's interested in this product, I am, uh, we're, we're through the prototype stage now. We tested it on uh, two different bikes and it fits, <laughs> thank God, and it works. And we can get you started on this. If you are interested in this product, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com and say, hey, Greg Goat, I need that sprocket adapter. And then what I will do is I'll take some notes. We'll be communicating as soon as I have this in production, which um, I submitted a purchase order for these today, and uh, we'll have these available. 
um, what we found that even with a 42 sprocket and a torque converter, you still get a lot of power out of that bike, but you get a, a great top speed. So um, old man Hint said uh, with a 42 sprocket, he was still pulling wheelies on his Warrior. Um, with a 196cc clone and a torque converter. So we're, we're for the for the guys that don't want that big chain or want a lot of different options, well, we could take that same sprocket adapter and use 35 chain sprockets. And we know the cart guys use those, so th those are available in anywhere from, I don't know, 53 teeth up to 80 some odd teeth. So you have a lot of different choices as to what you want to do. If you want to run a big bike like a Coleman and have that 35 chain, you have all sorts of adjustability right there because of that adapter. And um, I'm very proud of this because it's my design. And uh, it, it's simple, it's effective, it's solid, and uh, it, it'll work. So th this is going to be uh, good for us. But please, any of you that want those, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a, a list of people that want those and uh, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Just say, hey, Greg Goat, and that way they'll get the message over to me, and um, we will communicate on this. And as soon as I have these available, you will be the first to know. Okay? Oh, Nick's in the house. Good to see you. What time is it? Oh, hey, you guys ready to play the game? chance to win one of these see this stuff's backwards with this camera one of these gray go garage t-shirts i'd model it for you but i got my speedo on right now because i'm going swimming later you know here at the burbank studios of ombwarehouse.com we've always got nice weather here sun shining birds chirping it rained yesterday um who, who would have thought right okay you guys ready to play thomas in the house no, it's not for doodle bugs. I've got a doodle bug adapter. And yes, yesterday was my birthday. I'm 55 years young. Um, I have the mentality of a 16 year old and the virility of a 90 year old. So, um, wait, what? Oh, that's what my wife tells me. <laughs> Mrs. Go, it's always sweet to me. All right, you guys ready? WD 40. You can see the can behind me. We all use it, we all love it. Everybody's got a can of that in their garage, right? What does the WD in WD-40 stand for? What does the WD in WD-40 stand for? Come on, guys. How, how can I make this any easier for you? What does the WD in WD-40 stand for? Oh, Cliff Neck in the house. Yeah, not water diluted. It's water displacement. So when that product was originally developed, um, it, it was to uh, spray on electronics and humid, uh, you know, not electronics, but um, like, like in a distributor cap. If you were in a damp environment and you had some issues, spray a little WD-40 on there. It sucks all the water out. Um, it, everybody nowadays thinks it's a lubricant really not designed that way but it works that way so what the heck right so water displacement and it was the 40th oh that's backwards 40th time it took 40 tries to make it right so that that's what it uh wd-40 water displacement formula number 40 so not very creative Yes, David, and 40 is the new four. So you 40-year-olds that act like four-year-olds, yes, 40 is the new four. Um, so anyway, Nick, Cliff, is on the board with one. I, so I've got a dilemma. You know, uh, I've got this Predator 212 on the bench behind us. We started on this last week. And um, don't know what I'm going to do for a cylinder head. So I, I need you guys to... Uh, Help me vote on this, okay? So what we're going to do is uh, have you guys vote. And uh, maybe um, uh, Randy, Blue, if you can help uh, count the votes, um, I, I would appreciate that. So this is the stock cylinder head from a California non-Hemi Predator engine. Still got the five millimeter valve stems, stock valve train, 
um, they are coming with the bigger 27, 25 valves these days, but uh, it's got the large chamber. So I've got this head that we can try. Dallas, good to see you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. But wait, there's more. If you act now for a limited time only, you can get a free set of steak knives or not. I've also got a 14cc head that I've drilled to fit on the Predator block. So do I do the 14cc head, the stock head, or do you guys want to see me use the Hemi head on it? Comes with 5.5 stemmed valves, 27 intake, 25 exhaust, has a very large combustion chamber, and uh, I'm not going to have any milling done. And um, I just uh, need to know what you guys want to see. I can put whatever head on this block. This is a non-hemi block. I've got a cam, a rod, and a flywheel coming. And um, no, I don't get a discount on this stuff because when I do stuff for myself, it's not fair that I get a discount because you guys don't. So I, I buy this stuff just like you guys do from ombwarehouse.com, fast shipping and good prices. Free shipping I think I got too because I spent over $99. That's a bonus, right? So if I go with the Hemi, I'll have to get the longer push rods. I'm, I'm willing to do that for you guys because, you know, I love you guys, right? And girls, Karen. Um, so I've got three head choices. We can go with the... 14cc clone head with the 25 intake and the 24 exhaust. Yeah, I think the stock uh, non-hemi Predator head with 25 uh, exhaust and 27 intake, uh, about a 22, 23cc chamber. Or we can go with the Hemi head. And I think this is 23 to 25cc chamber, something like that. Not going to do any milling. I'm going to do a bolt-on deal. Um, not not going to be like, um, I, I don't want to mention any names, but his initials are David Wolf and take 80 thousands off on a you know piece of glass. Um, I'm, I'm not down with that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you guys let me know. So, yes, it will, it will have a thin head gasket at .009. Um, last week, you guys saw me fumble around with trying to get the uh, piston back in. But... I had two crankshafts on the bench. One was a clone crank. One was the Predator crank. I had the clone crank in, you know, because that's how I roll here. Um, you guys can learn from my mistakes. So I put the clone crank away. Um, I got that 16-millimeter crank uh, from uh, Coleman to uh, to work on uh, some stuff for that. So um, I measured it. I was 20 thousandths in the hole. So I, I know that I bought a stock rod. I'm going to use a stock dish piston, and I just need a head choice. So, Sean, and I'm using a Mod 2 cam on this. Um, Mod 2 is my least favorite cam on the planet, but that's what I'm doing with this build. Um, eventually, this engine will go on a bike that I'm going to build for the wife. Um, as soon as I see Sean and, and get one of those, uh, those doodle bugs from him, that that will be her bike. Okay. Here's the 14. Here's the 14 cc. See, I'm always backwards. Here's the 14 cc head, and here's the stock Predator California non-hemi head. So you can see the difference in the chambers. It's quite a bit. So um, I, I've got brand new valves in this one. In in the um, 14cc head, but I'll probably change those out for stainless valves. Um, so that, that's still up in the air. But, um, you know, I'm going to run 18-pound valve springs, or if I do the Hemi head, I'll run 22-pound valve springs. But, uh, you know, just take a consensus of what you guys want. With, with the uh, Hemi head, I'm going to have to drill out the dowel pin holes to fit. Um, I've got a drill press and drill bits. So I can do that, no problem. I'm not worried about that. So you guys let me know. You guys can help me. So I'm seeing a lot of 14cc, but then I'm seeing some uh, hey, Danny boy in the house. Good to see you, brother man. Good Lord, I miss you, brother. 
Um, no, Evan, we're not going with a 275 cam. This is going to be a mild build. Um, and like I said, the, the Mod 2 cam, um, it's not my first choice. But it's I want this to rev out a little bit. I, I'm not concerned about the lift. Um, you know, I'll be porting these heads. Um, I won't be doing any milling to them. So uh, I'm going to use the stock disc pit, dished piston also. So we'll, we'll see. You guys uh, let, let me know what's going on. Um, yes, Dallas, I'm going to upgrade the push rods, and I'm going to make sure that they're at the proper length, you know, because I don't want to tear up any rocker arms. Um, you know, mini, mini bike nation, they, uh, they're, they're good at that, and then they blame somebody else. Um, anyway, you guys ready for another question? Uh, time goes so fast when you're talking like this. Oh, what? Arizona mini bike riders love those guys. They keep me cool. Big shout out to Arizona mini bike riders. Thanks for stopping by, you guys. Okay. Anyway, next question. You guys ready? Um, any, anybody that uh, knows knows me better than. A lot of people knows that I, I used to sell cell phones for a living on a wholesale level. Um, the electronics industry is horrible. I hate it. It's disgusting and uh, the biggest bunch of that you've ever seen. So um, glad glad I'm not doing that. And uh, so glad to be in front of you guys because you know although the camera does add 10 pounds and I've got 15 cameras on me, you know, this is my world. So anyway, let's get it on. We're all familiar with AT&T, right? A uh, big company, um, a, a giant in the communications industry globally. Um, AT&T, that is an acronym for what? What does AT&T stand for? AT&T is an acronym for what? Oh, Dallas. Dallas is one of those AB guy, AZ guys. That's cool. It, come on, Dallas. Get your Googling going. AT&T is an acronym for what? Ah, Cliff Judd in the house. The neck. Got it. It's American Telephone and Telegraph. You young people won't know that because you think HBO is still HBO, but... I'm old enough, and you guys know I just had a birthday. That stands for home box office. Like us on Facebook. I uh, that makes that warms my heart. You got you guys making me tear up a little bit. That's right, um, American Telephone and Telegraph. So yeah, at home box office. Yeah, come on, Jim. You must be a, a, a youngster here. So so anyway. Uh, when we left off last week, we were working on this Predator block here. You know, and I'm always impressed by these blocks. Um, you know, remember back in the day when you had a dual roller bearing Briggs flathead that, that you were a bad hombre? Well, these come with a dual, ba dual, bearing, dual roller bearings in it. They have an iron liner already um, for 100 bucks. But... Um, what I've done was last week I showed you on top here, there was a little nub that was preventing me from screwing this down. I took that and ground that down. I also took my Dremel to the inside, cleaned up a lot of the casting flash. So I know that, you know, through heat cycling, that nothing's going to come loose in this engine. So that, that's important to me because let, let's say a, a, just a tiny chunk of aluminum gets loose. And uh, knowing my luck, which is all bad, it's going to go right into the oiling hole on your connecting rod. So with, with that in mind, I make sure I get all that, the, the little casting pieces out of there. Um, I, I see a lot of questions all the time from guys. And, uh, you know, they, they say, well, should I break my engine in first? And, and I'm like, heavens no. Why would you do that? Um, you know, you can break in your engine with performance parts. And not all have all that junk flying around. Um, there's always a ton of black stuff in these engines when I open them up. Um, I, I, it's probably some Molly paste that they use a, as an assembly lube that comes off when they test fire these. But 
I'm not sure. So, oh, Buckeye in the house. Um, thanks for stopping by, Tom. So, I say no, don't. If you're going to build a performance engine, and we know that they're $100 on sale, well, go buy yourself a new engine. Don't start with something old and used that, that, that you don't know the history of. You don't know how much junk was floating around in it. You don't know how scored the crankshaft is. Buy a new engine and start there. I mean, if you're going to invest four or $500 in making a performance engine, why would you have the, you know, use all that old stuff? Doesn't make sense to me. So I only start with brand new engines, and I don't like getting my hands dirty. See the nails? They're clean. I like that. Mrs. Goat don't want me touching big old messy, greasy paws, right? Start with a new engine. Clean it up. But, you know, I've seen a lot of casting flash in these. So I'll get a, a, in with, with my Dremel, and I'll clean up the inside of the block. I've also take – see, I'm backwards again. That was silly, though. Where the uh, low oil sensor comes out, I've, I've drilled that out, and I've tapped it a uh, quarter-inch NPT and uh, just put a brass plug in it with a little sealer. So got that sealed up tight. Um, I've got my button head Allen screw right there in in the side post and you, you guys saw how easily that popped out last week so i'm sealed up there i've got my this was my experiment with the 1 16th npt um i don't know that i'll do this too much because that was a nine dollar and fifty cent fitting um which is a little bit too expensive for you know most most bills and nobody has uh 1 16th npt taps uh, except for neck just because he's an oddity. But, um, you know, I'll, that'll be coming out. I'll be redrilling that and go 1 8 NPT and just put a plug in that. And then the block will be done up. Um, what I also like to do with these blocks, once I'm done drilling and filing and stuff, don't tell Mrs. Goat. I put these in the sink with hot, soapy water and I scrub them. Every time I find grit in the bore. And what you're always looking for is run a paper towel over that bore. When your finger, when the paper towel comes out clean, that bore is clean. The issue that I have with these engines and that iron bore, it'll start rusting almost immediately. Um, I don't take the bearings out. When I'm done scrubbing it in the sink, Tell Mrs. Goat. I'll, I'll bring it right out. I'll run some compressed air through it. I'll put some water displacement 40 into this bearing. Just soak it. And then I'll then I'll blow it out and clean it out. And then I'll soak it again. Just want to make sure that I displaced all the displaced water. And then I'll uh, oil down the cylinder. And that keeps everything fresh. Uh, you're not going to get any flash rust on your cylinder walls. And that will give you a great start point for a good build. Um, I've got some small scrub brushes. I've got some little bottle brushes. I clean everything out. There's always junk in these engines. So make sure that they're clean. One thing that you'll see on, on every engine is where they tap these backwards again, where they tap the, um, the dipstick holes. There's always casting flash in there. Um, that's something that can come loose in your engine. I want these things to stay together. It's only 100 bucks. My labor, it's free. So I clean these up really well. Every one of these little casting tabs here typically has a little casting flash on them. I knock all that down, take it all off. If I want it to last, if I'm investing in this, in this $100 piece, I'm going to do the best I can to make sure that it stays good for a long time. And here's something for you ninjas, okay? Here's the crank that we pulled out last week. And you'll notice it's got this gear on the end here. This is the gear that, that runs that little uh, nylon gear that's inside the case for the top governor arm. Um, that's just press fit on here. It's not welded on. It's not part of the crank. It's, it's press fit on. 
So let's see if we can go over to the bench and knock this darn thing off. You'll notice that on either side of this counterweight, you can see that. So that's where I'm going to hit with my punch and my hammer. I'm not going to use the, the big fun hammer on this. I'm just going to use the small hammer. I'm just going to set my punch right along the side of this crank like this. Start the first side. We're almost there. All right. It's off. You'll notice where this ninja star came off was this part of the crank right here. You see that? So it doesn't affect anything. Your bearing butts up to this anyway. So it's one more thing that I know that when everything goes wrong, it always happens to me. And I take the ninja stars off and they're fun to throw and uh, you can stick these in the walls and I have a small collection of ninja stars here just in case there's any ninjas out there that need extra stars okay so um, I take all those off it doesn't need to be there uh, you saw how easy it comes off you guys know that I'm a dirt clod and not very bright very handsome good-looking but not very bright. So I just take these off. If it doesn't need to be there, why why is it there? So like you us on Facebook, I am Eric. I am help at ombwarehouse.com. You are in the Gray Goat Garage. And this is where it all happens. This is the epicenter. Okay. But the true epicenter is oldminibikes.com. That's where all this stuff got started. People don't realize that. But Oldminibikes.com, that, that's what uh, put uh, mini bikes into the forefront of Americana. And, you know, for us old guys that are trying to relive our misspent youth, it's perfect for us, right? So why would I use a brass ha hammer, Kevin? I don't care about this. It's a ninja star now. I'm going to throw it, see if it'll stick into the wall of my neighbor's house. I'm not throwing it in my house. All right, so we're good on that. And you guys notice these fancy shop rags that I have that I buy at the swap meet. These aren't cotton. No, no. These these are the microfiber towels, and that's what I use when I build my engines. Um, these are used towels that they sell cheap with some skid marks on them. Um, at the swap meet, I always wash them before I uh, put them in the, in the shop. But, um, you know, it's not going to leave lint in your engine. And if, you know, you see somebody use a paper towel in an engine, it's going to leave some stuff left that can get in inside the bearing and and crap up the, the, the rod bearing and, and the crank and, and get stuck everywhere. You don't need that. So come on, guys. Landed on the bench. Okay, where are we at now? Okay, here's one thing I don't like about this crank. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. It looks like the guy that was chamfering this hole had a very bad day because it, 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 it's like they put the tool in there and it went rah, 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 rah. I'm going to smooth that out. I want that smooth. I don't want any what we call stress risers on this crankshaft. Maybe you can see this side better. It is ugly. So I'll take my Dremel and a sanding roll, and I'll smooth that out. I'll hit any other spots, um, typically any uh, parting lines from casting, and any, any just sharp, rough edges on this. I'll take it out. As long as you don't get it too aggressive on this, um, you don't really have to worry about it. You have to remember that, um, you know, if you're building a Hemi engine and you've got a lot of lift and a lot of duration, you've got to do a lot of work here at the top of the crank to clear the camshaft. Don't clear the cam, clear the crank. Um, had a guy in the Pacific Northwest that races carts, but also is a Porsche mechanic. So he had to grind his hemi crank down. And once he was done with that, he took it to his engine engine guy and had it balanced. 
it was still in balance. So if you remove a small amount of material on this, it's not going to matter. Just uh, we'll make a better piece for you. More microfiber towels. Long Beach swap meet. That's where it all happens. Yeah, I know. Mo's not here, Eric. Um, Jason, email me. Help at ombwarehouse.com. Earlier, while you were still eating dinner, I showed this adapter. And this will work for an MB200. And you can use a 60-tooth sprocket on your MB200. So if you want a lot of torque, you're, you're uh, want to do some wheelies, or, you know, if you're 600 pounds, uh, I'm only half that. Um, this will allow you to use a multitude of different sprockets. So email me. I am Eric the Gray Goat at ombwarehouse.com. Email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Like us on Facebook. I like to see all those blue thumbs going up the side of the screen. That uh, makes me happy. Oh, Matt, dude. Yeah, better late than never, dude. All right, so where are we at? Okay, next thing we got to do is take this piston apart, take it off the rod. And you're going to notice on this piston that there's a little indent right there. And what that does is that allows you to take that circlip out easily. But what I want to do is, let's see, they've pushed the gap up to the top, the open end of that circlip up to the top. Hey, my kid's home. Hey, kid. Hi, so I'm going to rotate that back down to that groove. Easier said than done. So then I can get my needle nose pliers into that circlip, pry out, and then just pull that circlip out while the helicopter goes by. See, every now, if I wasn't live right now, this would be out already. But because I'm live and in poor light, it's not working as planned. And these little tiny peepee pliers are bending. So I'm just going to rotate that out. So I've got the circlip out right now. And the beauty of this is you only have to remove one side. So the side that still has a circlip in it is here. I'm just going to use my finger, and I'm just going to push that pin through. And it's a little snug, so I'll just take it. Rod's out. So like I mentioned earlier, I've got uh, a billet rod in the ARC billet rod, standard length and a mod 2 cam and a billet flywheel uh, every uh, pile of junk that i build here regardless of what it is um, unless it's one of my older two strokes i have a billet flywheel if i'm going to throw my leg over the top of uh, one of these machines and i want to rev the guts out of it um, my deductible even with awesome health insurance is a hundred dollars the billet flywheel is 105 it's about being safe and protecting your privates. So billet flywheels are cheap um, in, in comparison to the scars, the blood, and the uh, deductible at the emergency room. Okay, so the block's ready. I got the side cover ready. I've got gaskets coming. Um, I've got my crank. Uh, I'll need to work on that. That'll be ready to go. Um, we've got the, the piston is ready to go. Oh, circlip's right there. I'll have to put that in so I don't lose it. And uh, I don't get dirty, Dallas. 
No. Unless you want to see Dirty Dancing. Okay, we don't do that. It's a lie. This is a family show. Come on, man. So, anyway, I, I've got that ready to go. So, you know, uh, hopefully somebody's keeping. Uh, yeah, I know. I got, I got plenty of scars already, though, Tom. Um, I used to cut meat for a living half a lifetime ago. So I uh, I used to help the doctors stitch my fingers. So they, they, they always enjoyed that and a little bit of help and friendly conversation. And, uh, you know, drink a beer while you're getting some stitches. Awesome. All right. You guys ready for another question? We're getting short on time. Okay. It's common right now that you, uh, I love NHRA, and I was thinking about Cliff Neck out there. Um, I think he was um, out in the dirt uh, doing some uh, te testing. Um, where were you, Muroc or somewhere? Uh, dry Lake Bed, um, testing a car they're taking to Bonneville. Um, but I love NHRA, and... Uh, watch it as much as I can. They say that the top fuel engine these days is making 10,000 horsepower. If that is a fact, how many horsepower are they making per cylinder? If a top fuel dragster makes 10,000 horsepower, how many horsepower are they making per cylinder? El Mirage is where Neck was, uh, what, last weekend? And um, out there testing, getting ready to go to the salt. So I think they were uh, – Tyler, you're real close, brother. This is a math problem. If a top fuel dragster makes 10,000 horsepower, how much horsepower is that per cylinder? Come on, guys. Gals, this is child's play. Angelo Chipper Alangi in the house. That's 1,250 horsepower, 1,250 horsepower per cylinder. And hold on, I'll show you guys something. So there's a piston and a rod out of a top fuel dragster. This one was made into a clock years ago. Uh, I just took the clock out because it's ridiculous. But, um, you know, these, uh, this is used. They, they only use it so many times per run, and then they toss them, and then they make clocks out of them, and then dumb, asses, dumb guys like me buy these. So anyway, that, that's a, a, a top fuel connecting rod and piston right there. So can you imagine that? And I think it's probably a might be a five inch bore, four and a half inch bore, making 1,250 horsepower. That's craziness. But they're also pressurizing the heck out of those with those uh, the giant superchargers. So Angelo in the house with 1250. Let's get another question in the pipe. Um, you know, I talked about this Coleman stuff with this sprocket adapter and this awesome engine plate that we produce so you don't have to cut your frame, weaken your frame on the Coleman bikes to put on a, a torque converter, put whatever sprocket you want on now. Um, we're dedicated to the Coleman stuff and we're working for you guys. But anyway, neighbors just got home. When did Coleman begin selling their gasoline lamps? And I know you young guys don't get this, but us old guys used to have to go and pump those, pump pressure into those. So it would, uh... <laughs> Mrs. Goat says I'm not dumb, so that's good. So anyway, what, what year did Coleman begin selling gasoline lamps? Swing arm kits are hard, dude. Uh, we can't make a swing arm kit for the CT200s. That, that, that's uh, a little challenging. 
So anyway, what year did Coleman begin selling gasoline lamps? I always lose my train of thought, Tom. That, that train's real short. It's a, it's a, no engine at all caboose. So Kevin Royce is in the house the year 1900. So for 118 years, they've been making lanterns. So 1900. So Kevin in the house. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for playing. And uh, you get nothing because Neck's still in the lead. He's got two. Angelo Chipper's got one. And uh, and people that that are still on dial-up. Well, I'm I'm looking at the side of my screen right now, and that tells me who came up first. So, um, yeah. I lose my train of thought all the time, Tom. And uh, let's go on to another question because Angelo's got one. Kevin Royce has got one. Uh, Cliff Neck has two. And we can't have that happen. Cliff's too pretty to wear a gray goat shirt. So let's go on to another question right now. Okay? Angelo, Kevin Royce, you guys need to pay attention because you guys can uh, get tied up here. If you had one square mile of dirt, one square mile of dirt that you owned, how many acres would you have? One square mile. It's not mini bike related, but if you win a gray goat shirt, then you're the baddest dude on a mini bike. So if you had one square mile of property, how many acres would you have? Clayton in the house. See, dude, you got rid of dial up and now you're on it, brother. Clay Harold, 640 acres is what you would have. So, Cliff, before you leave, you need to email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Hey, Greg Goat, or I'll get a hold of you because uh, Cliff Neck is the winner. So, anyway, where'd we come up on the cylinder heads, guys? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start building this engine. I got parts coming in. Um We using the 14 cc head. Okay, Tyler, Tyler, tell me the 14 cc head. So, we'll uh, we'll we'll get it up. Clay, you need to send me an email. Clayton Harrell, email me help at ombwarehouse.com, and um, just say, hey, Greg Goat, what the heck's going on? And uh, you and I will have a little chit-chat, okay? So, yep, we're uh, we're in the house with a 14cc head. So that's what we're using. We're going to drill it out. We're going to have it fit the non-hemi Predator. Um, I'm going to get stainless valves for that. I'm just not keen on those, those funky keepers that uh, just slide over like that or slide right off like that. I'm not down with that. So even if it's uh, just something that's uh, low performance, um, we're not going to do that. So, um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get started on that 14 cc head. Um, I think I've started porting it too, and uh, I, I will continue that. I uh, bought bought some new equipment, so I'll start on that. So we'll we'll be starting on the short block first. I'll get the head done. I'll show you guys what I've done, and um, I'll probably lap the valves in and, and do that live. And then um, show you guys how the gray goat puts in valve springs. So, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be showing the porting. So, um, I'm just going to use stock rockers, Ange. Um, you know, the, the, the stock rockers uh, for, for a Mod 2 cam, I'm not going a heavy spring. I'm not going a lot of lift. Um, I'm actually going no greater lift with a Mod 2, um, just a little bit more duration. So with that said, I'll buy some stainless push rods, the stainless valve kit that ombwarehouse.com has, right around 60 bucks, comes with stainless steel valves. The valves are real nice. They're polished, they're swirl polished on the ends, um, 5.5 stems, um, comes with split lock retainers or split lock keepers, aluminum retainers, 
26 pound springs, which I won't use um, on that head. I'll probably use 18s. And um, that, that's a thing that I see all the time. Too many people saying, well, you know, can I get more speed out of my engine if I put, you know, 26 pound springs on it? No. If you're not upgrading the cam, why would you think just a heavier spring is going to do it? Stock cam is going to run out of juice at five grand. So, you know, it doesn't make sense. Springs alone is not is not it. It's the entire package, you know. So Mod 2 cam is what we're doing. Um, it's going to have a lot more duration. I'll, I'll show you the uh, difference on the lobes um, when I get the cam in. Uh, I'll have it for the show next week. Um, Sean, thank you for stopping by. Um yeah, I'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk, and uh, I, I know you and I can do some stuff. Um, yeah, uh, Clay, I'd love to have somebody. Yeah, Nick, thanks for stopping by, Arizona mini bike guy, dude. We got five minutes left, and you stop by. Get out of here, dude. Um, I, I've been talking to Sean anyway. So, yeah, you know the the Tecumseh and the Briggs stuff. Um, you know, I can rebuild the Briggs in, in no time flat. Um, that that's a fairly easy engine for me. Um, the Tecumseh stuff, I tell you what, I uh, I had Mrs. Goat order me a dial um, indicator tonight, but you know when you have to set points on an engine where it has to be thirty thousands from top dead center and you the planets have to be aligned and this that's why I like Tecumseh, my gumsa, not going there. You know, take a business card. Put your coil on, put it between the flywheel and the coil, and set your gap with a business card. Call it a Briggs, call it a day, have a beer, peace out. You know, uh, it, it's easy. Cliff Judd, help at ombwarehouse.com. Okay. So, um, Nick, got a couple items here. This is a sprocket adapter for the Coleman CT200s but it also fits the MB200s and Warriors. This will allow you to put a 40 tooth or a 54 or a 60 tooth and get rid of your stock 50. Um, I'm having these produced right now. Um, should have them, I'm hoping, late next week or week after. Um, my design on the motor mount, um, this uh, for the Coleman bikes, you don't have to cut the crossbar. You move the engine up with the mount and you move it forward you clear the crossbar you clear everything you can use the stock chain guard um paul has um, has been my uh my gopher on this and um paul's a new guy to mini bikes um he, he's showing his brand new acquisition which is a whirlwind and i'm very jealous of that but um paul paul's a I think he's been in mini bikes since January, maybe, and he's on number four or five right now. Um, the guy's got the fever, and he's got it bad. He doesn't even need more cowbell. So, um, he in being uh, new product, I like to put it in the hands of somebody that's not experienced. Um, I can install the the torque converter kit on the Coleman bike in less than an hour. I've got guys that'll take him a few days. Um, so. I, I like to have other people evaluate this stuff that maybe don't have the same level of tools or knowledge of the product and haven't done it 27 times. Um, that, that's part of the process of developing the product. So um, I, I, I've got some stuff, and I'll talk to you guys offline. But um, And Tecumseh's uh, just a little bit faster than what? Nothing. Everybody race Briggs 5. Parts are available. They're cheap. Um, what billet flywheel are you putting on Tecumseh's there, big boy? Nothing. Okay. So, yeah, I'm uh, – HS50s, I think it's a decent motor. Um, the only way I'd have one is if it's late model with the uh, electronic ignition. Um, no way am I going to deal with the points and, and getting your piston to certain top – yeah, whatever, dude. You know, that, that ain't working for me. So we'll, uh, we'll see about getting some special guests on here. Maybe I can get uh, Cliff Judd to stop by. Anybody that knows Nick um, knows that he is um, a mechanic extraordinaire and uh, knows his way around every engine. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, I like the ideas. <laughs> and keep the ideas coming. 
thank you for stopping by, you guys. Um, I, I appreciate each and every one of you. This is important to me to to keep this going and um, it helps with my low self esteem to have a great audience every week. So. Yeah, no, I know that there's a mark on the crank, but what if you set those points wrong? You fire up your engine, it doesn't run real well, then you take everything back apart. And that damn blower housing is also where the head bolts are, you know? Does that compromise the integrity of that head gasket or the head? So it comes to stuff. You guys are killing me on that. So anyway, Briggs is where it's at. Flatheads forever. Thank you guys for stopping by. Um, remember, we are ombwarehouse.com. I am Eric. I am help at ombwarehouse.com. This is the Grego Garage, and I do appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evenings, and be safe. Thank you. I am out. Now.